Uh, again, I'm Ed Jones, the editor of the Freelance Star newspaper. I started there as an intern back in 1965, which for some of our younger staff members, they're still aghast to hear that, <laughs> that anyone could still be in one place after all those 44 years. But uh, I feel very privileged to have had the opportunity to work there and also to be here tonight for this program. It's interesting to me that the word stigma is part of the title of tonight's program because as we all know, it's, there's still that tendency to want to avoid talking about something that, that is this personal, that is this sensitive. Some still work on depression and mental illness as weaknesses. Some see suicide as sin. And yet tonight, we have a panel of people with powerful stories who are willing to share. And they're willing because they know personally the toll that comes from depression. Three out of every 100 adults in America must deal with bipolar disorder or manic depression. Young people are not immune. In Virginia, two young people a week commit suicide. Nationwide, more teenagers die from suicide than from cancer, heart disease, AIDS, stroke, pneumonia, influenza, and chronic lung disease combined. To delve into these matters, let me uh, introduce you to our panel. Far left for the audience is my colleague from the Freelance Star, Nick Hedwallander. Nick is the associate publisher of the newspaper. As you'll discover when we chat in just a moment, he comes from south of here. Uh, Australia, to be specific. Quite a bit south of here. Nick, who's been involved in all sorts of community and industry organizations, has suffered from depression for many years, and he will be telling us about his story. Next to him is my friend and fellow vestry member from St. George's Episcopal Church downtown. Mary Jane O'Neill. Mary Jane is very active in the community. Among many things, she serves on the Community Foundation Board. Mary Jane's husband, Bob, whom I knew, took his life two years ago after suffering many years from depression. Bob was a prominent, highly respected businessman in this area. He was a veteran of the U.S. Navy. Mary Gilkey, as most of you probably know, <coughs> is Joanna's new dean of nursing and health technologies. She's a psychiatric nurse. Her sister took her life, and her daughter had a serious bout with depression. So Mary will share with us some of her story. She will also be able to talk with us about some of the warning signs of depression. Todd Brown of Fawn Lake in Spotsylvania County lost his 18-year-old daughter, Carol Ann, to suicide on Easter Sunday of this year. She was a cheerleader, honor student, who Todd now believes suffered from bipolar disorder. Since her death, Todd and his wife Michelle have vowed to do all they can to educate people about bipolar disorder. They're working on an interactive website. We'll talk to him about that. And I believe, Todd, you told me this is either the 17th or the 18th forum or session that you've attended over the last few months. So that's our, our panel for this evening. Let, let me begin with Nick. Nick, many people might think that signs of depression are obvious, but I would imagine that many of our co-workers at the Freeline Star, you and I have worked together for many years, wouldn't have a clue that you suffer from depression. Would that be an accurate assessment? I think that's, you know, <laughs> I think that's completely accurate. And, um, I, like most of us, uh, I'm a pretty good actor, and uh, I, I think I've been able to fool most people. And I think a lot of us, with depression, hide it. We try to look at the hide it. It's, uh, the stigma of uh, depression is, is something that uh, I think is something we all have to deal with. And, uh, I have been able to keep it from people who I didn't want to share. When did you personally know 
that you were a depressed person. It was something you were going to have to deal with. Well, I, I think I was in my late 20s, early 30s when uh, I started having days where I didn't want to get up in the morning, didn't want to go to work. Um, I'm an avid exerciser in the days and weeks where I didn't want to go out and exercise. And, uh, but it came to a head uh, on the first day of the, of the school year. I was a teacher for 10 years and on the first day of the new school year, uh, I got to the end of the day and realized that um, I'd been in some sort of panic all day. I couldn't remember one thing that happened during that day. I'd taught classes all day. I'd been to a staff meeting and driving home. I couldn't remember anything about it. My heart started racing. And I just started crying. And I was uncontrolled. I like, could not control myself. And so what did you do about it? Well, fortunately, I had a very caring, loving wife who I was able to talk to. And uh, her first reaction was to call my priest. Came out and visited him. Uh, he was a person who had experienced <coughs> depression, and he was very supportive. And within days, I was seeing a general practitioner. Who, uh, getting Do you go through phases when you discover something like this about yourself? Did you, was it difficult for you to accept the fact that this was going to be a long-term issue that you were going to have to deal with? It, it really was difficult to accept that. It took me years to, to, to deal with that. Initially, I was living in a very small country town. There was no clinical psychologist. There was a, no psychiatrist. There were a couple of GPs. And uh, the GP gave me some medication. And I... I'd go on with my life just dealing with, with medicine. I uh, really didn't have anyone to talk to about it. And um, every, every year or so I'd say, well, I can get off this medicine, and I'd quit that and uh, be okay for a, a month or two, and then I'd sink down into a depression again. So for you, the medicine has been key. The, the medicine has been key, but more than that, I moved here in 1990, and that year, met a new friend. He was an associate pastor of St. George's Church. And he shared with me his life with depression. He didn't know that I suffered from it. He was telling me about his own life. And through that, I learned the power of working with depression. And I started having regular sessions with a clinical psychologist. Uh, I met with a psychiatrist. And we worked on balancing medications and worked on lifestyle and understanding some of the things that cause depression for me. With all that you've done, and as I say, for anyone who knows you from work and knows you in the community, it's remarkable because so many people wouldn't have a clue that this is part of your background. But with all of that, do you still have the lows and highs? And, and what's it like when there's a low? Um, my lows and highs have really eaten out in the last five years. I, I've dealt with this for 25 years, so uh, it's been a progression. Um, the last five years, they've really settled down. I have. I, I find that if I can watch my diet, exercise regularly, maintain good friendships, is absolutely important to this. Um, I can't express how important good relationships uh, to, to living with depression successfully. And uh, I have to work hard to maintain those relationships and, and keep um, keep myself physically healthy and to maintain um, the medical treatment I've 